Hey guys, welcome back. BDCKR here. We're back with our weekly Q&A videos. This is season 12, episode 9. Uh, this is the season of sort of our favorites of stuff. Yeah, old favorites. So this is us going through teams. Well, some of them are not super old, I guess, but they're... We're all I guess old. none of them are new, new. Everything's old. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is a podcast. It's a YouTube video. Uh, if you're listening to this in podcast all people. only mode... You will be uh, hearing us talk about our uh, characters, and if you are watching the video, you'll get to see the actual team that we're talking about here. Yeah. So who are we? Who are we showcasing today? So this is the old BDC Care special because when we first started doing this, nobody was playing this team. I don't even know if anybody's playing it now. But the the funny story behind why we played this team was so back in the day. Um, there wasn't Tentu Totem. There wasn't Master's Death card. Mm -hmm. So basic damage was king. This team did good basic damage. It also had relatively low stats. And you can see that from the battle points. So even though, it, despite the fact that both Elseworld Flash and Containment Doomsday are Elite 8, we're still, and we've got Regime Green Lantern because that was the original team. The. Battle points only start at 3,600. Yeah. They progress up so that in this last fight of an ultimate ladder, we get the max 5,000 battle points, but it doesn't start there. Yeah. And they're Elite Eight. So, you know, they're relatively low stat characters, but they're really good. Um, so, I, I, I guess I, that was a spoiler. It's Elsewhere Flash, Containment Doomsday, and Regime Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing about Doomsday... Okay, so, remember when we used to call him Pickle Suit Doomsday? Yeah. Okay. I used to say that so much to the point that when I tried to use his proper name, I would call him Containment Suit Doomsday, even though he's Containment Doomsday. Yeah. Well, uh, all right, Gears. Flash has Promethean Longsword, Knife Collection, Hyperspeed Plated Suit. Um, why that's a little bit interesting is that it is really geared towards basic damage, but it's um, none of it's higher than... 100. So it's total gear loadout is 300 instead of 450. Yeah. And it works. He's actually doing most of the damage in a lot of the fights. Part of it is because we're relatively, relatively low stats that we're not seeing a lot of Astro Harness. But even when we get Astro Harness, because Doomsday's got Master's Death Cart, Mutated Bone Spikes, and Claw of Horus, um, he can be the guy who shatters all the opponent's gears. Mm. And... Uh, Raging Green Lantern's got Astro Harness, Charge Disc, and Lexcore Hel Helmet, hark hearkening back to the times when we used to say that with gear, you can make anybody a tank. You can't always make anybody an offensive juggernaut, but you can make pretty much anybody a tank. Mm -hmm. And that's what he is here. Um, so the, the I want to point out to you that, uh, you the viewer at least, that the gear, each of both Elsewhere Flash and Contained Doomsday have their signature gears. And they both give them the 25% unblockable chance, which is fun. And mm -hmm. you're seeing it in action. We talked about it last week during the weekly recap about how because Flash gets two hits for the first swipe, that you greatly increase your chances of getting a block break against the opponent. It makes the basic damage dealer as your main damage dealer a viable option. You can see... These fights, he's reasonably effective. Mm -hmm. And Doomsday, I mean, again, now that we've sh shown you all the gear, the interest, the other interesting thing is, despite not having Tantu Totem, it's still a pretty effective team. Yeah. And I guess we could have given Tantu Totem to contain Doomsday and drop Mutated Bone Spikes. But there's something in my mind about like an old school kind of fight where... Uh, Doomsday gets the healing every time he does a special one. He is geared towards special one so that he, you know, he's stripping gears, healing. He gets the added benefit of um, block break. I don't know. It's just, it feels much more old school to me where you're less reliant on specials. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, even though he's got Master's Death Cart, we don't even really care that it's going to get powered. The, the key really is that it it, um, it lets you leverage a tag and when you have power to strip the opponent's gears, which we need because most of the time, like most of these fights you're going to watch, 
else world flash is just really doing basic damage combos over yeah. and over again and the neat thing i noticed is so you know how when um elsewhere flash when his bullet time passive kicks in then he can make the opponent do the worm because every time he does the swipe combo and knocks yeah, they him don't down, even have enough time to stand up right and he can still connect so without even before his passive connects if the opponent is fully backed up and you do an unblocked uh, special one you can do a swipe combo before they get up the same way which is neat. You can't do it after a swipe combo. We can do it right after a special one as long as they're backed up. Because the problem is, we do um, special one and you you knock them down, they back up too far. They're yeah. not within range. Like you could do it, you'd be fast enough, you're just not close enough. And I still, I, I can't get over the fact that they nerfed Elseworld Flash. Too bad, because he wasn't even that good before. Right. And the and it's not even that obvious to people who never played with him. But if you go back to some of our older videos to see it happen, is that he, his passive used to be able to interrupt um, a combo from the opponent in the special. So if they had a special that was multi-hit, if you got, I mean, a lot of times you don't even get this when they're smacking you around. But if you happen to be lucky enough that in the middle of their multi-hit special it hit the range of health where his passive would trigger. Yeah. It would stop them. They would get stunned. You would get bullet time. Hey, he's not that great a character otherwise. So what's happened now is because they've nerfed it so that the opponent finishes their special before they process the chance of the, or the, the passive. A lot of times he gets knocked out before anything happens, mm. which kind of sucks. And it, Listen, don't get me wrong. I love Flash characters. Like I've always said, their basics are really fast. Uh, I like um, how the rhythm of it, because even though when their swipe combo isn't as fast as their tap combo, I still like how it's easy to get the right rhythm so that you can, you not, don't quite juggle, but you can, as long as you don't get power, you can keep on just doing swipe combos and land them unblocked. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, again, this team still a viable option. We did have to promote it a little bit, um, but you are maxing out the battle points on the last fight. So you're not getting fight. you're not maxing out the battle points. Yeah, you no, know, but you're yeah, you can get to that point, right? So if, I think if we maybe boosted them up a little bit more, we could. We probably would not or maybe need to replacing the silver. You know? Yeah, Raging Green Lantern I like so much. It feels just so classic. But if you maybe brought them up to Elite Ten, I think there's a chance that you'd be able to get them high enough to to get. Maybe I just I'm just reluctant to do it because yeah. they're so good. Or also maybe augmented their attack and health. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what what I find neat playing like this because you know when you play a certain team and you get used to working with the strengths of that team and you feel oh I don't know how I could live without it. Like when I'm playing with Arkham Knight Batgirl and I can sort of fight with Abandon and let the opponent when it's the right time just knock out my Arkham teammate or yeah quote unquote knock out the teammate and I can get Batgirl the drop into with a nuke it is surprisingly fun and easy to handle wally west and dawn of justice batman because in this team i'm not relying on specials at all and i can just combo them like basic combo them right into you know oblivion yeah yeah love the team still super good super good still super fun and really good effective grinding team and oh so this the thing is back in the day when the reason why we use this team so much, I, I started talking about this story and didn't even finish it, was that we used to film these um, videos and lay the track at the same time instead of mm. putting track down on, on video that we'd saved from earlier. So it needed to be a fight that I could do relatively mindlessly, not pay attention. Yeah. Win most of, not most of the time, all the time, because I hate losing. And this was it. Like a swiping, just, you could basically mindlessly swipe over and over and it was such a an easy grind where you could do other stuff while you're doing it mm -hmm. yeah there we go great team uh now before we get into the first question i do want to talk about one thing that is new this week but n also not new which is deadlock uh so i've seen a decent amount of conversation about it mm -hmm. it's finally past the point where you are supposed to be keep quiet about it um, so there's and, no longer an embargo, like a yeah. Uh, yeah. But it it's been it has been a bit weird, right? So for anybody who doesn't know, Deadlock is Valve's new game. 
Uh, it is a MOBA hero shooter, uh, third person shooter. So kind of like League of Legends and, and those types of games or Dota, if you're thinking about the one that Valve actually made themselves. Uh, and it's, it's been interesting because it's been sort of half out for a while now. It's been in beta, like a closed testing for a long time. And you weren't supposed to talk about it. Valve was not acknowledging it officially, but a bunch of people played it. And I've had access for a couple of weeks now, um, just because it reached the point where people could invite, you know, anybody in their, anybody and everybody in their friends list. Mm -hmm. Um, so you needed an invite, but if you wanted one, it was very easy to get one. Right. Um, so, you know, I I was messaging with my friends. They were like, we should try deadlock. And we were able to easily sort of get all of us in. And then as soon as one person you know is in, everybody you know is in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've been playing it for a couple of weeks, and I've been really enjoying it. I'm not really a MOBA guy. I have very, very limited experience with them. Um, so I can't... And so MOBA stands for... Multiplayer Online Battle Arena. Okay. Uh, but if you don't know the specifics, it's kind of hard to describe from first principles, or just not worth it here, What's, I guess. What would be a, a more popular or... Whatever? League of Legends, right. Dota... Okay. Heroes of the Storm. Okay. But you know what a MOBA is if you've played it. Smite. Right. Um, Clearly, I have not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but importantly, I'm really, really enjoying it, and it's out now. So it's been interesting seeing people start to talk about it, because it was kind of like an open secret, because there was tens of thousands of people active mm-hmm. concurrent, which is more than a lot of games ever get, right? I think So the, what active concurrent means that they're playing at the same time. Yeah. They hit that peak where there's how many thousand? Like, I, I checked recently, and it was like 80-something thousand okay. was the was the highest peak it sounds like a lot is that a lot yeah i for example i think the new game that came out called black myth wukong uh that a bunch of people are playing hit like two million and uh that it's a single player game and i think it's that's the second highest like concurrent player count on a single player game ever right okay so if you're thinking about you know eighty thousand, you're eighty five thousand for a game that's not out that's invite only you know, there are these hurdles to get into it. Mm. Uh, you're talking about, you know, it being a little more than an order of magnitude different from kind of like biggest titles of all time kind of territory, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, for reference, TF2, I, there's been videos. TF2's player T- count. Team Fortress? Team Fortress 2. Okay. Uh, is in like the hundreds of thousands. Mm-hmm. But I've seen videos looking at bot activity and the real estimates are like less than 100,000. Mm. So, uh, and TF2 is obviously a very old game, but it's a flagship. It still means a lot to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And this game is already sort of at or surpassing TF2 levels. And, and talking about numbers is kind of significant when we're talking about Injustice, where part of, a big part of the complaint is that the the audience is not nearly as big as it speaks. So it makes yeah. it harder to justify the devs putting more money into it yeah so it's just it's been interesting because it's a very strange kind of rollout but the game itself is pretty fun and i won't make a strong commitment to everybody but what i will say is because it is so easy to give out codes uh if you would like to get into deadlock uh you can find your steam uh friend code which will Mm -hmm. allow me to add it straight from code uh and if you drop it in the uh comments i will uh try to shoot off some codes to some people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if I shoot off a code to you and I don't get to somebody else, you can add that person and add them as soon mm-hmm. as you have access, which would mm-hmm. only be, you know, I think it's like minutes to hours, depending on how long they take to, mm-hmm. to send off a verification patch for the codes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. It's been fun. I have been enjoying myself with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I think I've stuck to it in a way that I haven't for a similar type of game for a long time, which I think is, is a really good sign. Because there's a lot of like, sort of first-person shooters, you know, I play some Valorant with my friends, and I, I like that game, but there's something that feels really kind of a little bit exciting about playing Deadlock sometimes, uh, as much as a game feels sort of exciting to me, and that's nice. That it, It's very hard for me to sort of understand why I like it, uh, because it's, it's a feeling more than, like, a mechanic. It's not like, oh, they put this in it, right? Or, oh, it just plays really smooth. But I've just been, I have been really enjoying myself with it so far. So it's an interesting marketing strategy. And I feel like there's some parallels to how, say, Blue Sky was rolled out. Yeah. There's an, is it fair to say it's an artificial kind of scarcity that's generated when you have invites only? Yeah, but it's, like, pseudo-artificial. Right. right. But at the same time, it having more people play would actually improve the experience the same way having more people on a social platform improves the experience. Yeah. So when you create that artificial scarcity and then you relax it, like the same way Blue Sky all of a sudden yeah. 
removed any kind. So the scarcity sort of generated the buzz mm-hmm. and that um, sort of that excitement about it. But and the, to the get... coherence as a marketing strategy, I think the, the reason why it's weird, right, is because it's invite only, but for a long time it's been kind of lax invite only. And you would think that you're generating buzz, but one of the specific things that's strange is that you're not supposed to talk about it, right? If you talk about it on a public forum, uh, you run the risk of getting your account banned, right? Mm. Uh, from matchmaking and not being able to use it anymore. There was like an article that somebody released about it, uh, mm. and then they got their account banned for matchmaking. Uh, there, there's, you know, uh, Valve wasn't responding to requests for comment, right? Mm-hmm. So on one level, it, it feels like, it could be a scarcity marketing tactic, but on another level, it doesn't really seem like they're trying to market it, you know? Uh, and so now that you can talk about it, uh, and we'll see if the strategy for getting it out to people changes it all or develops, right? But it's, I think it got so much play because it's Valve's new game and they made one of the largest MOBAs. They made, you know, a, a, the shooter that kind of launched hero shooters as a genre. They've made Like, most of their sort of multiplayer experiences that are anything like this have been huge, right? And they've been super Mm -hmm. influential, and they've been really good, uh, just fun, engaging, interesting. They also made, like, Counter-Strike, which is the precursor to sort of, like, Valorant. So if you think about, like, almost all the shooters that I played for, like, modern, online, Mm -hmm. primarily, like, no single-player campaign kind of shooters, uh, Valve, and, and just... I guess MOBAs too, Valve has in a lot of ways kind of paved the way. Uh, So I think, you know, you see the next thing that they work on and there's going to be, I think naturally a lot of uh, desire for people to get in and try it out and stuff. And I think there Mm -hmm. is some, you're right on some level, the scarcity makes people want it more, but on another level, like the, it doesn't feel entirely coherent if they were just trying to generate as much buzz as possible. I think in a lot of ways they were actually just trying to play test this. And mm-hmm. they decided the best way to not be totally overwhelmed was to adopt this kind of like weird, like viral kind of strategy. Mm-hmm. But, but have they much much since it started? This is, it really is beta testing. Have they implemented any changes yeah. since the beginning? All right, Tons. So, like what? There's a bunch of new characters. The art is different. Uh, they've, it's had more updates than almost any other game I've ever seen on a regular basis. Before it was released. Well, I don't. Before it was wide release, I haven't. I haven't participated in like this. Isn't even like an open beta. This is like a semi closed, right? Like it feels kind of like an open beta, Mm -hmm. but it's not. So that that's what I'm saying. Like it's the kind of thing where there's a bunch of networking issues. Uh, so there will be updates on a semi regular basis to patch stuff like that. Uh, there is they're saying that a a lot of the art is not final. A lot of the voice acting, like most of the stuff, like assets are subject to change. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I, you know, for me, it feels almost like a finished game. Like it's just playable. Like I'm not really thinking about the ways that it's incomplete right now. Uh, But I think they're iterating on it relatively fast. They've introduced like, um, I think maybe two new characters since I've started playing. Like they're just just dropping them randomly, but like no sort of right. So, but when you say fanfare fast. I mean, it's like when you talk about like scientific studies. So is it fast relative to other games that have released or is it just fast? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't have enough insight into this side of game development, you know? Yeah. No, no. I'm just saying compared to the other sort of AAA games or whatever the, the type of game this fi- most compares most favorably to. Yeah. So once it's the like, games that are newly released, do they update? Like how, how often do they update? Games like this often update pretty regularly. Um, for example, Valorant will update like a couple times a year with major okay. updates. So there will be okay. new maps, there will be so, new uh, characters, there will be new super occasionally so weapons. That's a good example then. So when Valorant, not now, but yeah. when Valorant was first released, how long ago was that? Like a couple of years ago. All right. So remember. when it was first released a couple of years ago, did they have updates in, at a comparable pace to what you're seeing? Not even close. This? So, all right, so then it is. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to get Valorant, at. Valorant, like, like, gives, like, a new character every six months or something like that. Uh, right. And there's, like, a marketing cycle, and it's standardized times and all this stuff, and everything's sort right. of on, on cycles. There's, like, a like a multi-month-long, like, battle pass and stuff. So this game has no monetization. Clearly, there's no way that they could be making any money off of it yet. Yeah. It has no sort of unlocks or metagame resources. Uh, you just have all your characters all at once. When they drop a character, yeah. they just dump them into the game. Uh, with no fanfare, they're not. They're, they're you know they announce it, but it's right. there's no like 
you know, character trailer or anything. And for example, most recently they dropped a character in and then right away they had to remove them from the queue because there was um, instantly a bunch of bugs that people discovered with him. Like Red so Sun Green Lantern? They, they removed him. And then, like, a couple hours or, like, a day later, they put them back in. Yeah. So it's the kind of thing where, like, almost every time I go to launch it, I'm not surprised if there's, like, an update yeah. for something. Well, then this is why I'm asking questions. Not that I don't believe your assessment. I, I'm trying to get a context of somebody who doesn't play the game, right? Yeah. So when we say they have, like, 80,000, that means nothing to me. So I'm not really mm -hmm. sure if there's any significance. So it does sound like, from what you're saying, that it 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 has features of it that it looks like they are really still in development and yeah. it's not just a marketing strategy. But Yeah. And it's hard for me to tell when, because the, I think the other thing with Valve is that they have a very much like, it'll come out when it's ready kind of philosophy for their games. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it could be that in six months, it's going to be out for real quote unquote. And it could be that it's going to be like this for like years, right? Like mm -hmm. I have no clue. Uh, and so it's just, it's interesting. I'm going to, I look forward to seeing it as it develops, but it's already a lot of fun for me right now. Mm -hmm. And for the type of game it is, um, and for the type of games that these often become, because they're kind of like esports games mm -hmm. often, another thing that I think is going to be important that I think is probably not there yet is the balance and the relative strengths of the characters and items and abilities and stuff. Uh, so one of the things that it might be is that it's just not tuned yet, you know? It might be that there's not that great anti-cheat yet, so it's a lot easier for people to cheat and ruin the experience of other right. people in the games. There's right. all these sort of little things that are different from how it feels and plays uh, that that modify your experience, but I'm having a blast mm. with it right now for whatever it's worth. So yeah, right. uh, drop, drop your friend codes in the comments if you're interested in getting in there. Um... I, I won't promise that I'll stay friends with you on Steam after I send you the invite, but I, I will try to at least, if there's a couple mm -hmm. people who want in, uh, help you out, and then you've got all your, your friends in right. as soon as you're in right. as well. Right. All right. Uh, getting into the first question, I guess. We've taken first, a maybe while. last. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we should this do is, two. Uh, 1087 says, hello, question. How did you have double dots while swiping? It looks cool, and it looks like it helps. All right, so I guess there's two parts. I, in my mind, I already had an answer to this question, and I just realized I'm jumping ahead. This is the same problem I ran into when reading explanations for different kind of glitches. Yeah. And why we started this channel, because I was reading descriptions about how to do a challenge reset, mm -hmm. and they were missing steps. Yeah. Or they were a little bit wrong, or they had extra steps. And then I was motivated to do the for us to do the first um, challenge reset video in real time so that people could follow along. And see what we're doing. So the dots are actually, and this is the part I've, I almost forgot to mention, is the dots are um, visual indicators of where you're touching on the screen. Yeah, and that's a setting that it's you in can software. change. You can change in the settings for your phone. It's essentially almost like a presenter mode, right? Yes. Where you want to be able to be able to track the the interaction yeah. that's happening. So, or a debug it's, mode. It's possible to do it both on your at a device level and in some recorders. And I think Mobizen also allows it, but we've done it at a device level, so it shows touches. So what that those two dots are, are two fingers touching. Um, if I can find it, we have an older video where we talk about how to get 200% on the swiping yeah. uh, minigame and 200% on how to get it on the, the sort of circle tap enough times minigame mm -hmm. to get 200%. Because there's two of the tap fast. There's the tap fast to... Uh, keep it at uh, two hundred percent at the point where your time runs out, and yeah. tap fast enough so that you do it enough times before time runs out. And what that does is, when you have two fingers, sometimes your most of the time your device registers it as two separate taps or two separate swipes if you're using for swipes. Yeah. And as I'm getting older, and I am less worried about getting 200% on swipe, but also less able to because of my knobby and arth arthritic hands. Um, you'll notice I'm usually only hitting, depending on whether each swipe is worth 5% or 10%, I'm usually getting somewhere between 160 on the really low end yeah. and 200%. The good news is when you get 160, you're still getting 80% of the maximum damage yeah. of that special anyways. So the two dots are just two fingers. Yeah, and the reason, and like I said, we've got the video. I'm going to try to find it and link it in the description. But what it does is it doubles, effectively doubles the speed 
of um, your swipes because you're doing two swipes every time. It's like it's like um, MetaHuman Flash. When his passive triggers, he's doing three hits for every hit that he would normally do. So I am getting two swipes for every swipe. So it effectively, if, as long as your device registers both of them, it can, it can effectively double the speed of your swipes. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so oh. it does help, actually. Sorry. And oh, I'm yeah. just looking at the last part of the question. It looks like it helps. Yes, it looks like it helps because it does. Yeah. And you can do it too. Uh, in all likelihood, you won't need the display because the, the whole point of the taps is that you won't really be seeing them ever, right? Yeah. So those dots under it only really work. But if you want to do that yourself, I'm sure you can look up a tutorial. Yeah. Uh, you have to enable developer options and it's in the developer settings. Mm -hmm. um, because I'd forgotten about that. It's been so long since I've changed the settings on the phone mm -hmm. that I'd forgotten about that. I believe you have to tap on like your phone like version in your about my phone screen enough times to enable developer settings. But I don't actually know if that's true. Um, exactly. Look up how to enable it. It's for Android devices and you'll have no trouble at least enabling it. And there are some settings in there that you might want just as a user. I think you can change animation speeds mm -hmm. um, on stuff, yeah, yeah. which is probably the most useful because it'll make your phone snappier and responsible. Just do stuff faster uh, if your animation speeds are set to much faster. And you can turn them off entirely, actually, if that kind of thing, for example. I think that will improve performance the most, right? Where you just don't have a lot of the animations. Yeah. But, you know, I, I like some amount of animations just because they, they help make stuff more legible when you're taking actions sure. on your phone. And you're used to it. Like, <clears> when, <throat> you, you, when you rely on those sort of visual cues to know what's happening, it's, it's uncomfortable to not have them. Well, there's a reason why they're there. But I think I do have my animations on two times speed. Uh, so that, I guess, is a little pro tip for something that you might want to do regardless. Mm. And obviously doesn't change anything like inside a game or whatever. That's just your operating system, sort of like s your app drawer swapping and stuff like that. It just makes it mm. snappier a little quicker. Mm. Um, anyways, our next question comes from Eisen Banks, And they say, could you tell me what the previous challenge cycle is? I'm a returning player and I don't know the cycle which Warner Brothers used to use that they are now including other characters every other week. Yeah, I, I think... Um... You can probably find it on the Injustice Mobile subreddit. Devlin16 used to do a yearly recap yeah. of all the events for every week, whether it was a challenge or the multiplayer or um, the packs, like everything. Yeah, so you can collate that information. Yeah. I mean, and we've kept track of it in all the videos if you want to do that. I mean, you'll also give us a few cents for all the views if you watch all of it that's true and the other thing we do is so we have patrons on patreon that's true and typically there's not a lot that we can offer them besides the glory of having their names at the end of the videos but one of the things that we've been able to do as a value add for uh, our patrons is we've been keeping a spreadsheet of all of the events from I want to say 2020, 20, maybe 2020, mm -hmm. 2019. But we, we have, we have our, our, all of our data available to them. And it feels yeah. like one of the few things that is like a meaningful value add yeah. uh, that we wouldn't have released anyways mm -hmm. uh, that we can do for, for our patrons. Yeah. So um, I think that, that, that has some value compared to the work it would take to, to collate it yourself, but not a lot. I mean, again, the, the information is out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we got time for this next one because I'd like it's this a long one. We yeah. we're mostly actually just reading it because they're giving us information, yeah. not the other way around. Yeah, uh, this one comes from Ninja uh, Bunny One O One, and they say for the multiplayer opponent stats segment, medals have boosted stats on defense. The game basically thinks they're golds, so they gain the stats boost from promotions that a gold would. In the case of New 52 Shazam, as the commenter said, an Elite 7 augmented New 52 Shazam has 83,859 damage. This is how the card appears to the owner and plays on offense. However, when on defense, the promotion multiplier for medals, which is 3.57 for E7, is replaced by the promotion multiplier for gold, which is 5. This means that the Shazam that should really have 83,859 damage actually has 117,449 damage when anybody is fighting it. This is likely responsible for the seemingly impossible stats that the commenter mentioned. 
As a note, damage and health augments on the opponent's team do not show up before a match, but they do take effect once the match has started. This means that if a damage augmented Elite 7 New 52 Shazam, which should only have 92,245 damage, is used on defense, it will effectively have 129,194 damage in-game, though it would still show up as 117,449 before the match and in the battle log. Also, thank you guys for still making content on this game after all this time. I've watched you for years at this point, and I really appreciate what you've done for the community. And so, the, yeah, this is a great comment. This is the kind of scholarship that I used to love. Yeah. I, and it doesn't matter enough, I think, for me still to test love. it. Still do Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, I still love this the idea when people sort of discover stuff. It doesn't matter enough in the fights to me to check it to confirm it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I love that it's a, a, a good explanation. It is testable if you want to yeah, test it. Well written, so easy to follow. So it's a good hypothesis in the scientific sort of method way because it's testable and falsifiable. Yeah. So you could actually do it with you can other replicate method, it, right? Yeah. Or not if it's. But I, I it feels like it's. it's well, the the process is called replication, I guess. You, yeah. Yeah. No, but I, I feel like that the explanation is enough that it's yeah. like, it's it's one of those things that if you don't test it, it's. It, let's let's say for the sake of argument, I'm not saying that it is. Let's say for the argument it turns out to be false, it's still rational enough that I'm willing to believe it without having to um, convince myself. Yeah, and it's great because there are definitely you know still gaps in our knowledge, which is surprising for a game of this scope that we've been playing for as long as we have. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit surprising that there are gaps in our knowledge, but this is just one of those places where we we don't care quite as much about sort of the stats of the people that we're facing so we don't pay as much attention yeah. so we end up missing something and then i yes. really i really appreciate you taking all the time to type all this up and fill in that that yeah. information gap for us yeah i love this and it, again the scholarship is the perfect word for this because it's it's thoughtful and it's insightful and it's like knowledge yeah yeah so there we go that's that's all all, all we have is just nice things to say about this there's there's no follow-up from us because you know more about this than we do clearly yeah uh, so to finish up, we'd like to give a huge thank you to our patrons on Patreon. That is Michael DeVries, Irvin Ruiz, Hoshi127, Nora Klimic, and Paolo Caesar Pablo1, who are supporting us on the credited level, as well as 5 by 5 supporting us on the gratitude level. We'd also like to give a huge thank you to everybody who contributed comments, right? Uh, both yeah. ones that we have to give information to and the ones who gave us information today. Absolutely. Uh, and as well, we'd like to give a huge thank you to everybody who supports us in any form, which includes, you know, just getting to this point in the video and however else you sort of interact and engage with us. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. So thank you so much for your support, and we'll see you all next time. Komoda! Komoda.